week when she asked me about that, I was trying to prepare for that week's message and then the week when I was going to be gone trying to get ahead so I could enjoy my time when I was going to be away. So when she asked if she could preach on her last Sunday here, I was like... I think I said talk. I don't think I said Okay, preach. could I do the message, I think is what it was. And I was like, oh yeah, for sure. Because uh, what a blessing. Um, many of you know, and maybe some of you don't know, it's her fault you're stuck with me. Because we met uh, about seven years, almost seven years ago now, um, I met her and, and Kay Anderson at um, the association meeting for the state. Um, uh, Jim Sparks was there. He was the interim here at the time. And um, they were talking with him. We were talking with him. And um, Jim left and we kept talking. And we didn't think of any big deal of it. Lori and I were talking with him for quite a while. Um, and then these two crazy ladies found me on Facebook and asked if I would... Uh, Put my resume in. Have you in. thought about Mayo? Have you thought about Mayo? Um, knew where Mayo was. The new Mike. I had actually been in a, a pastoral small group with Pastor Mike when he was here. So um, I knew of all your problems um, <laughs> and, and everything. I, I knew uh, about the church, but we hadn't ever been up here and seen it. Um, so we put our resume in. We, then we came and, and, and checked it out because uh, we were already in the process of looking at and, and buying our cottage up here that we bought out at uh, Garland at that time, and, and it was a big part of, of Jolie, uh, of why you're stuck with me. Um, but I had, two I had two staff members left from when I started until this week, um, and Shelly's the only one that um, has been willing to stay around and work for me. <laughs> um, so I don't know what that says, but uh, life has, has brought a lot of different change for a lot of different people. Um, during that process, and, and this is a great um, blessing for us, opportunity for many of us, and um, it's part of, of, of the growth and, and walk of the church as, as people move into different times and points of life. But, Julie, I'm so thankful for you, and um, I'm excited for what you have to talk to us about. Um. <clears throat> One of the things, the, one of the reasons that I'm doing this, well, first reason, because God told me, but a lot of times you hear the voice of God, and it's a small voice, and I've learned through the years to listen to that small voice, and you still make those little deals with it. So if pastor is at practice tonight, then I will ask him if I can do that. Do you do that? Like, you know, make those little deals, and sure enough, yeah, he's there. And so I've learned that through the years, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. I am not a preacher. I am not a um, public speaker. I just want to share today. When's the last time you took a risk, a chance? I mean, when's the last time that you took a real risk on you? When, if ever, have you taken a step of faith in the direction of your purpose in pursuit of your calling? We just read the story of Jesus walking on the water. And we know the story. We remember that during the storm, Jesus left the boat and his disciples where they were, and the disciples became aware that he was no longer in the boat. They looked out in the water and saw Jesus standing. They looked in fear and began to shout, it's a ghost. That, that's God's people. Jesus comforted them and said, it is I, don't be afraid. Peter spoke up and said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come out on the water. Lord, if it's you, make sure the pastor's there Wednesday night so I know. If it's you, put that person in my path so that I have to say something to them. If it's you, have them give me eye contact after service so I know I'm really supposed to say something. If it's you, just open the door. Jesus replied, come. Peter stepped out of the boat, and he began to walk on the water, and he took a few more steps, which is us. Took his eyes off Jesus. Noticing the wind and the rough waters, man, we've got those now. And he slowly began to sink, and he yelled, Lord, save me. Jesus came to him, grabbed him right out of the water, and said, Ye of little faith, why did you doubt me? 
When we read the story or think of the story, we tend to think of Peter as a failure. Hmm. We see that Peter stepped out in faith, and then all of a sudden he gives up. He stops believing. He fails. The funny thing is, we tend to never consider the others that were in that boat, and they were talking trash to Peter, thinking he was crazy. But he got out of the boat. Eleven other disciples in the story. We don't talk about them because that's us. We talk about Peter and his failure. Why is that? Because in our core, we'd rather be chilling in the boat than walking on the water. And it's easier to condemn those that step out. Peter is the hero. He is the risk taker. He's the one that, who, if only for a moment, had faith enough to let Christ dictate his walk. He abandoned his fears and intently followed Christ. Granted, he did take his eyes off Christ and began to drown. How many times? We've done that over and over and over. We just loosen our focus just a little bit. But Christ is always there, lifting his hand. Not yelling, just lifting his hand. I've said to Roxanne many a times, I even wrote her a little note one time, it's better to get out of the boat and sink than to never get out of the boat. And I truly believe that. We here are a church of water walkers. I want to take you down memory lane for a moment. Some of you are new to the church here and, and maybe don't know. This is a church that had a vision years ago in the 70s to build a building here. They cut down trees. Um, and when they did the, the addition on up, up, up in that area, old addition, cutting down the trees, having a little sawmill here, um, getting the, the work bees together and the potlucks to feed the crew, they worked on that. The church that had this dream, where would we be without Bob Hill helping us, directing us? Yeah. And all the men that, that gave up their day, day after day, to build this. Do we know how to do this? Absolutely not. They did not. They didn't. I mean, you know, who, who would have ever dreamed? And, and I used to love people when they would walk into those doors, just right there, because they never dreamed that this was in here. They'd look outside and think, hmm. And they'd come in those doors up there, and they're like, wow, this is really cool. I remember Sharon and Frank up on scaffolding all the way to the ceiling, painting the roof. Frank, how old were you when you did that? Oh, come on. I'm 60. I don't want to be up there. Okay? We were a church that didn't know any better that people could come to church in shorts in the 70s and the 80s. And a pastor in the old sanctuary would put his foot on the altar and kind of lean down and talk to the congregation that he was on a softball team at Northwoods. Those days, that just was not heard of. He loved God, and he wanted to reach out to people. We had a pastor that was willing on Pastor Appreciation Day, go around and find his people. Let my people go. And he had the little uh, shepherd outfit on and the, and the staff. And he had to go to Lens Market, the cop shop, all around town, walking in and yelling, let my people go. And we would show up, willing to do the unorthodox things. Why? Because they love God. We were a family. We believed in them. They believed in us. That's really what I want to talk about, believing in one another. Christ believe, believes in us, and we know that. That's the truth. 
That's a truth that's, that's solid. But how often do we believe in each other? My parents believed in me. I, I never doubted that. No matter what it was and no matter how obnoxious it seemed to be, whether I was playing for a mother-daughter banquet um, and I thought louder was better, faster was better, and you could just kind of tell when you were done, Mom and Dad thought I did great. I've made every mistake in the book. I've had my hands on wrong keys. I've had music fly away. I've done wrong songs. I've had tapes that didn't work. All of a sudden, you're standing, and, and nothing is working. And you're just kind of smiling, and I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? My husband believes in me. If I come up with the idea, he figures out a way to make it happen. When this building, we were trying to get ready for a Carrie Pettit concert here, and it was our first big concert here. There was so much stuff that, that hadn't been done yet. We wanted really good sound in here. And God said in his little small voice, go to Guitar Center and find a sound person. He was not a Christian. It was not a church. He had long hair and several hoops and doop, hoopy doops in his ear, holes, and just didn't look like the person, but he looked like he knew sound. He gave up his time free. He even came up here. He designed a system for us. Then we need the floor pockets. Dave's not trained in that. He soldered them all. I remember that after that he had a little headache because of all the solder going on in here trying to get it, dust, get it done in time for it. But you know what? When we hooked it all up, it worked. Why did it work? Because God was in charge. God was in charge. We have a snake that runs down under this because we wanted to be able to move that bohemia thing back there if we wanted to play ball. So we had to be able to have a snake somehow hooked and unhooked. We talked to the guy about it. Oh, yeah, we can have that. We can do that. Had it specially made in California and sent here. Then they put it in a little conduit under the concrete. I mean, just all the little things like that that God was in charge of. God spoke to people one by one in a small voice, and they listened. When I went to the board at that time and said, we want this sound, they didn't say, no, you can't have that. They believed that we could do it and that we could do it within our budget. This building we could do within our budget. Rick Bills believed that this building could be paid off, and it is. God spoke to him. He listened. Yeah. That was an act of faith. We don't always behave the way we should. There was a time in my life where I stepped away from church. And if, if it wasn't for the faith of Christians before me that had the guts to say something to me, to come to school and give me food at my door for months, before I'd even speak to her. Or calling me on a Saturday night and asking me to play on Sunday. When people had asked me, oh, please play, I'd come back at that point. I'd, please pl play. No. No. Thanks, no. No. But the right person asked me, and I said, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Why? Because... I, I needed that person to ask me. I don't know why. It, it wasn't like I was saying, oh, if she asks me, I'll do it. It's because she was faithful at that moment to what God wanted. I am not a worship leader. I am not a singer. I'm a pianist. That's what I love to do. I'd be happy doing it with you or without you because the piano, I, can, I don't need people. But that's not what the church needed. That's not what Christ needed. 
And so through the years, you learn to do your purpose in God. So when I have to sing, I remember the first time I had to sing and play. And you, you think that's easy, but it's not. I sang in my head. Why would I want to sing out loud? I can sing in my head, and I can just play and enjoy myself. And Kathy would say, why aren't you singing? Oh, I, did I forget? Did I stop singing? Oh, okay. Well, then she said, well, it would really be nice if you would sing alto. Okay. So while well, everybody's singing, I'm hitting an alto note there trying to find a spot. Now it's easy, but it wasn't. It wasn't easy. When I met Dave, he played guitar for himself. He had no clue what I was going to make him do all the time. And when Jolene was here, Dave would say, why do we have to sing that song so fast? Because changing the chords. And so, you know, when Zoe started playing, he's like, this goes so fast. I got to change these chords. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jolene didn't give up. She encouraged him. She believed in him. And he took time to practice and practice. And now it's just second nature. This room under the carpet had a body of Christ that believed. And we came and we put people's names on the floor that we were praying for. Many of you are still here that remember that night. So think about those names and where their life has taken them. Where they were at that point of that night, where they are now. I can think of several. And without going into personal names, their belief in Christ at this point is because we were a church that believed in prayer, that stepped out in faith and said, I am going to lift that person up. I'm going to be bold enough to say that name as I write it down to let the other people know that I'm praying for them rather than just keeping it quiet in our heart. Deb, oh, I'm sorry, Deb. Got to talk about you. Deb was a percussionist. That means she just played like one drum at a time. Xylophone, drum, a cymbal. We didn't need a percussionist. We needed a drummer here. So she got a drum set. She worked on it. It wasn't easy trying to do that. Sometimes she had to change shoes. <laughs> but that's what we needed. How many youth kids? Peter is a, is a good example, or my son. All of those kids came through, and I, I distinctly remember one baccalaureate. We were in the old sanctuary, and I swear my hair just blew to the side. It was so loud of all their guitars and drums. There was an old commercial where they open up a, a briefcase, and the sound comes in. It was like that. And I'm thinking, oh. I mean, in front of this freight train. But you know what? I believed in them. They were in church, and they were giving testimony to Christ in their life. I've asked a lot of people from time to time. Tom Carnath, God said, talk to him about joining. And I said it. Some do it right away. Zoe, Zoe got really good at just saying no, 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 no. Have you thought about it? No, 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 no. I still had to ask. I still had to be faithful on my part. Because when God says to do it, you do it then. That's your, that's your moment in time. If God says to talk to somebody and then suddenly you see him in the Glens or family, family fair. God put them there for that moment for you to say something. And if you don't say it, that moment comes and goes. I truly believe that we are in a point in our church where we're kind of switching gears. There has been so many young adults, young families the last few weeks in here and kids running everywhere. What a blessing. 
And we kind of are in that shift again where we believe in them and they're going to make mistakes. They might even be praying and hit their head on the microphone during prayer and hear this great big thud. And you look around and, and everybody's looking at you. So I've learned really good you look at somebody else. <laughs> or when your fingers hit the drums on the piano during prayer, I can glare at Deb. It's prayer. We're a family. There is inside of us the spirit who tells us there is more than just sitting in the boat. You, we, were made for something more. That's why I'm talking as an example that if God says to do it, you do it. We were made for more. We were made to leave the comfort of routine existence and abandon ourselves to the high adventure of Christ. I invite you to be a water walker, to say, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come out on the water. I always get after Pastor when he doesn't pray after he speaks because then the worship team doesn't have time to get up here. Will you stand as we uh, prepare to uh, worship with Jolie? Uh, it won't be the last time, but it'll be the last time as her as a staff yes. member. Um, but what dedication she has shown to, to Christ and the church over these years. And thank you, Jolie. And I'll wrap it up when we're done worshiping.